shouldn't land surfaces that have been exposed to the elements for multiple millions of years contain deep channels of erosion? To find out, stay tuned. The Hermit Formation in the Grand Canyon area, it's been interpreted as a vast floodplain replete with complex systems of streams and rivers that supposedly existed about 280 million years ago using the conventional time scale. Now the Coconino sandstone that sits on top of the Hermit Formation has been interpreted as an equally vast desert that buried the Hermit floodplains as the climate became more arid about 275 million years ago. And that leaves a gap, sort of about 5 million years, that separated the end of the floodplain system and the start of the desert system. Now what's interesting from a creationist perspective, however, is that the unconformity that exists between the Hermit Formation and the Coconino Sandstone shows virtually no evidence of this supposed 5 million years. And that's because there is no to little evidence of erosion in the form of dips gullies or ancient stream beds. Now, that's a fact that becomes quite salient when looking at the contact. It is almost dead flat. Well, what about 5 million years of non-deposition instead? Well, there's no help there either since there are no known soil weathering profiles nor are pebbles or lithified hermit silstone found at the base of the Coconino. And it's for this reason that this particular unconformity could well be called a para conformity. There simply is no or little evidence supporting the existence of these supposed 5 million years. In fact, before the early 1980s, most geologists thought that the two formations were somewhat conformable. That is, there was a sort of a semi-continuous deposition that occurred across the boundary. But that all changed in the late 1970s when geologists first discovered the Schnibbly Hill Formation in nearby Sedona, and that separated the Hermit Formation from the Coconino Sandstone. This new formation, which was supposedly deposited over a 5 million year period, meant that 5 million years must now be inserted between the Hermit Formation and the Coconino Sandstone, even though no evidence for this 5 million years exists at the contact. And it's not just this one unconformity. Throughout the Grand Canyon formations, no less than 10 unconformities are said to exist that collectively amount to the passage of more than 250 million years. Yet in each case, these unconformities tell a surprisingly similar story. Each of the contacts are very flat, with little evidence of passage of those 250 million years. Now, yes, a few gullies and some deep stream beds, some as deep as 60 meters or 180 feet, have been discovered at a few locations. But the rarity of such features is surely telling. And if those 250 million years really existed, then deep gullies and stream beds should be the rule, not the exception. Now look, I fully acknowledge the qualitative nature of these data. Uh, this analysis, it cannot replace a thorough quantitative assessment. But even so, I think these long-standing young age creationist observations are still relevant and important. Now, as a catastrophist, I think one of the most promising research projects will be to focus on sheet flow mechanisms working over relatively short periods of time. And what that means is, rather than the sediments being deposited in channels, they were laid down rapidly, more like sedimentary blankets. Now, these same kinds of flow conditions could also account for sheet-like erosion. Now, yes, channeling was still at work, we still see that, but it took on more of an auxiliary role with sheet flow taking the front seat. Now, from a creationist perspective, the energy required to produce catastrophic sheet flow conditions such as this, well, it could have come from greater rates of plate tectonic movement in the past. And importantly, these processes didn't have to take place during Noah's flood, if that's what you're thinking. Uh, they could have, and many of my colleagues have good reason for thinking that they did, but it's also possible that many of the formations in the Grand Canyon were deposited before Noah's flood. Now, in my model, I propose that some of the early Paleozoic formations 
were probably deposited during the 1600 years before Noah's flood, but increased in intensity, culminating in the onset of the flood proper, as it is described in Genesis 6 through 9. And I've put a link in the description for part one of a three part series that I actually did on this if you are interested. So that's all from me, Ken Colson here at Creation Unfolding. Look, go ahead, pound that channel. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. And of course, look, if you found this video at all interesting or helpful, share it on your social media platforms right now. Of course, I always appreciate prayer, even just a few seconds to pray for Creation Unfolding Ministries. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you and goodbye.